Hello once again fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders. Boy do I have a numbers packed episode for you today. So over the course of you know the last few videos that I've made um, and even a little bit past you know like maybe about six months ago or a year ago um, I have noticed a couple of comments you know that came up um, of people saying that you know they started playing around with uh, what used to be called SimVim cockpit which is now called HCSCI. I think I'm going to take the advice of one of my followers that commented on one of my videos um, right after the name changed and I think I'm just going to call it Hixie or either that or continue calling it, calling it SimVim. Either way I don't think the developers will like it very much but it's just such a difficult name to say HCSCI you know and if I have to say it 20 or 30 times during a video I think it's a lot easier to just say Hixie. So maybe that's what I'll do. Um, all right, so this video, as you can probably tell already by the title that's there on the screen, I'm going to be um, doing an overview of um, Hixie and MobiFlight because as I was mentioning a little bit earlier, um, a lot of people have commented over the months that they um, went over to MobiFlight or I have seen even a, even a couple of days ago and even today, I think, I saw somebody say, why don't you just give MobiFlight a chance or Air Manager? I've seen that too. I've done a lot of research on MobiFlight over the past few weeks and maybe up to a month ago. As one of my followers said on one of the comments, I'll do all the reading so you don't have to. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, I always recommend that you guys go and read everything. I think it's very important, you know, to try to get all the information you can. So that's what I did with these two, you know, so I went out and did as much research as I can possibly do. I'm still there. I'm sure there's still a lot more, but obviously, you know, I don't have all the time in the world. So we're going to go ahead and go through these and, and uh, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on him and, and then we'll just uh, see what we end up with at the end. Okay. All right. So on MobiFlight, um, the, what I was able to find on it is, is developed by a guy whose name is Sebastian. Um, he seems to be very responsive and very helpful in the in the forums. I've seen a lot of videos that he put up on YouTube, um, you know that um, that explain how to do certain things. So there seems to be um, you know pretty good um, documentation on this, and I believe the current version they're on right now, which I was able to find, is version 8.0. If you go to their website, that is uh, the version that you'll see that's available for download there. Okay, now as far as Hixie, um, which was formerly known as SimVim Cockpit, um, the full name of this this software, this plugin, and the website is Home Cockpit Simulator Control Interface, which, as we've said before, is a mouthful. It was a lot easier just to say SimVim, but uh, that's why I'm thinking of calling it Hixie. So the developers are a father and son team. Uh, whose names are Vlad and Roman. I mean, you guys have me heard me mention them a whole bunch of times, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have already read that on the website as well. And the current version of uh, Hixie right now is 1.0.70C. You know, and obviously, as many of you guys know, I've been using um, Hixie for a very long time. You know, I started it when it was called Artsim X, and then right after I started, it changed over to SimVim Cockpit and um, that's when I really started using it and, and determining that it was very, very good. So for the hardware that they use, um, apparently MobiFlight, you can use an Arduino Mega 2560 or you can also use Arduino Mega Pro Minis and Spark One Pro Micros. Oh, that's a mouthful too. So those are the three different types of boards that, that you can use. Uh, with Hixie, you can only use for the master board, you can only use an Arduino Mega 2560. That is the only board that is allowed to be used. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be an original Arduino. It could be any any compatible Arduino 2560 Mega as long as it's, uh, you know, I guess good, decent enough quality, it should work. I've seen some as cheap as eleven dollars and i've seen some as expensive like the one i got i think was like forty six dollars it was an actual original arduino one so with hixie you can also use an arduino uno or arduino nano boards but you can only use those as controllers for lcds servos stepper motors and the button matrix 
which I'll talk a little bit more about a little bit later on. All right, so I'm gonna go over how many connections or how many uh, inputs or different types of components you can use with each type of software. All right, so with a, with a Mobi flight, it says that you can use up to 127 boards. So 127 Arduino Megas or the other two types that are also supported, which are smaller. Of course, with Hixi, you can only use one Arduino 2560 Mega. And I've gotten so many questions asking me how many boards can I use or can I use more than one board? And now I understand why. <laughs> it's because I had never before, I had never looked at a Mobi flight. Um, so I never knew that it was possible to use that many. But you'll find out in a little bit why I think that is very, very bad, mostly. It has some advantages, but at the same time, I think it's very, very bad. So let's continue. All right, so with MobiFlight, um, it does not have any multiplexer support. So obviously, you guys have might, might have seen on my previous videos that we use a 16-channel multiplexer board so that we can add, with each little board, we can add 16 more inputs or outputs, and they only take up one pin on the Arduino. So as you'll see in a little bit, um, this is going to be the way that Hixi is very, very expandable. So um, with uh, Hixi, you can support up to 59 16-channel multiplexer boards. And the numbers that you're going to see here that I'm going to talk about right now, I'm going to talk about them uh, because the fact that we can use multiplexers with Hixi uh, makes it a lot more expandable. You know, you can have a lot more inputs and a lot more outputs on only that one Arduino Mega. And so that's the reason why I'm going to consider it as if it was native, because you can use them. And with a uh, MobiFlight, you cannot use them. So you have to add another Arduino and another Arduino. All right. So, all right. So get ready to be blown away by some numbers. Just keep in mind that these are only my calculations that I've done. Uh, looking at all the pins and everything and seeing what you can connect to each one of them So this is this is like very very big numbers in some situations But that's what I determine is what you can actually connect to it. Oh One thing I forgot to mention a little bit earlier obviously and this these numbers that I'm going to give is assuming that That um, you're only going to use all the pins on the Arduino for one specific type of um, of component. So obviously when you're gonna use other components for other things, you're gonna be taking some Arduino pins for that. And of course it's gonna reduce the overall numbers. So the numbers that I'm giving you here are only if you were only to connect this type of components at that particular time. And then um, obviously, you know, it's gonna change depending on what you end up connecting to it. So we'll start with the push buttons. So the push buttons on the Mobi flight, you can have up to 68. You know, each button or each toggle switch, if it's only a simple on and off switch, will take off one pin on the Arduino. So you can have up to 68 of them. Um, if you want to add more than that, then you're going to have to add another Arduino. With uh, Hixi, you can have up to 944 inputs because you can add up to 59 multiplexer boards, like I mentioned before. So if you if you use the matrix, the button matrix, which you have to use an Arduino Nano connected to the master board, you add 176 more. I really, really doubt that anybody will need, you know, over a thousand inputs, but just so you know, they are available. All right, for rotary encoders, um, for MobiFlight, you can add 20 of them, and that takes up 40 pins. And I believe that's only taking into account the, you know, the clockwise and counterclockwise rotation of the encoder. Um, so it's not even counting the push button pin that, that's on some of them. Now the calculation that I did for Hixi, I counted up to that we can use up to 314 encoders, including the push button. Now if you don't include the push button, you can use 422 encoders. But nobody's going to probably need more than, you know, 15 or 20 or maybe 30 of them. So... That's just overkill. All right, for LEDs, little lights, um, on a Mobi flight, you can have 40 LEDs, and that's limited by the firmware, even though there are more pins than that available. 
is limited to the firmware due to power draw. And that's a big deal also on Hixi. If you've read the page on power um, in the website, you'll know that he constantly, constantly says that whatever you power through the Arduino itself, you must try to make sure that the that the current draw is between three and 400 milliamps. You know, he, he really, really stresses that a lot. So even, even in um, Hixi, we're gonna basically try to say that it's gonna be between 40 and 50 LEDs. And you're gonna try, as long as you can try to keep your power draw less than 500 milliamps. Obviously, if you're gonna be powering um, like seven segment displays and all that, that's gonna, you know, factor into that as well. So now if you add um, DM13A um, serial LED drivers, you can have up to 3,904 LEDs. And obviously you're gonna provide external power for those. You're not gonna be powering them off the Arduino. And these are all things that I have talked about a lot in my previous videos, but I will also talk about a little bit in the future when I make um, my new videos, you know, regarding each component. So you'll hear more about that then. All right, the next one is LCD displays. Now with MobiFly, you can have two LCD displays uh, per mega board. Um, but only one is advised because they say that it uses a lot of CPU cycles or a lot of memory, I guess, on the on the Arduino itself. So even though you can connect two, they really rec recommend that you connect only one. Um, so imagine if you want to have six LCD displays, that's already six Arduino Megas. Now, if you buy the real ones and you count them at $40 each, that's $240 just in, in Arduinos, you know, so... Ay, ay, ay. All right, so on Hixi, you can use up to 22 LCD displays connected directly to the to the board, to the Mega. Or if you use a, a Nano or an Uno for a controller, for an LCD controller, you can have up to 33. So you can connect 11 more, you know, with just adding the LCD controller. So that's pretty good right there. All right, the next ones I'm gonna talk about is seven segment displays. <laughs> I think these are everybody's favorite right now because that seems to be where most of the people that have contacted me have been having problems. At least uh, that's what I've noticed. So on MobiFlight, this is one thing where it really does excel in a way. So you can have up to 32 um, max 7219s connected to the one mega. Um, so you can have four of them connected directly to the board and then those are daisy chainable so you can connect up to eight of them together. So four chains of eight, you can have up to 32. And I'm not sure how that would work as far as the power is concerned. Uh, I think that you would probably need to supply them with uh, external power as well because that's a lot of displays to be powering off one Arduino. But anyways, in Hixie, um, oh my god, he's really gonna hate that I call it Hixie, I'm sure, but it's just easier, sorry. So in Hixie, um, you can connect 8 directly to the Arduino, and that would be on pins number 30 through 37. Um, or you can connect up to 960 if you use multiplexer boards as output multiplexers. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention on MobiFlight, it only supports Mac 7219s. It does not support... TM1637s and so far from what I've been able to tell all of the Mac 7219s that I have found they only have eight digits you know so if you're only going to use it for like the heading or the course you know on a 737 and that's only three digits you're basically just wasting five digits so that's one of the things I really like about the TM1637s that they come in four digits and six digits so even for the altitude or the vertical speed um you can you know you, you only use uh four or five of them i believe five of them so you're only wasting one digit instead of three on those so and i really hate right now with a i've been having issues too um with a max 7219 so that's i'm really really glad to be able to use tm 1637s whenever possible all right now servos on mobiflight you can connect up to 10 servos and they take up 10 pins on the Arduino board. Um, with uh, Hixi, you cannot connect any servos directly to the board itself. You have to use 
an Uno or a Nano board as a um, as a controller, or you can use um, a Whip Motion controller. And if you use the Uno or, or Nano board, you can have up to 18 servos. If you use a Whip Motion controller, you can have I think they sell them in different amounts, but is you can have up to 32 uh, with a Whip Motion controller. So that's um, it's pretty good that you can at least do that. All right, stepper motors on uh, MobiFly, you can have up to 10 and they take up 40 pins. So apparently each one takes up four pins um, for the stepper motors. Uh, with a uh, Hixie, you cannot connect any stepper motors as well directly to the Mega. So if you use a Nano or Uno for a servo controller board, you can have up to nine to 19 of them depending on if they have um, zero set position sensors. So the position sensor will use one pin, so you lose how many you can you can put on there depending on how many of them have zero position sensor. All right, and then the other bad thing about this is that with, uh, with steppers, you have to use a driver, a stepper driver as well. So not only do you have to have the, the stepper controller board, which is an Uno or a Nano, but you also have to have a driver all right and all that information is you know on the website as well and I haven't played around with these so I really can't even offer any advice right now all right for analog axes like potentiometers uh, mobi flight as of now that I can find it has no support for them so if you wanted to use a potentiometer you know to do the throttle or the flaps or the speed brake or any other thing that you can use a potentiometer for well, I'm sorry, but you cannot use it with MobiFlight. Now with uh, Hixie, you can have up to 15 analog uh, inputs directly into the Arduino, which would be on A0, I'm sorry, I think it should be 16. It's A0 through A15. Yeah, so it should be 16, I messed up right there. Or you can have, f which would have been 14, but now it's 15. Or you can have 15 plus one output multiplexer which you can also assign as an analog multiplexer. So you have a uh, 31 total with a uh, Hixie. All right, so I think that's probably more than anybody will ever need as far as analog axis. All right, for pulse with modulated devices, which are like uh, coils, um, those right there, you could, you do not have any option to use any on MobiFlight. They don't support that either. Um, with a uh, Hixie, you can have 15 pulse with modulated devices connected directly to the Arduino Mega or you can have up to 90 192 of them if you use 24 channel pulse with modulated drivers okay that's something else that I have not played around with yet so I have no idea exactly how that works I do have a, um, a controller right here let me see if I can find it real quick I know I saw it earlier yeah so this right here is one of those uh, PWM drivers that obviously I haven't even put the headers or anything on it So that's one of the ones you would use and they're to drive um, Things like this like the coil that's in this instrument right here um, The way the needle would move and everything that's a pulse with modulated pulse with modulated device so you would basically take um, That little thing out of this instrument or any other things that you can find like on uh, voltmeters or ammeters which this is and then you would be able to use that you know for that purpose all right so you can use like i said 15 directly into the arduino or up to 192 if you use 24 channel pwm drivers all right so i think that pretty much covers all the the inputs and outputs that each system supports um, I'm not sure if I missed anything I, I really really did a lot of research so I hope I got everything right so now let's talk about the pros uh, one of the things about MobiFlight that I've noticed as I was doing this research is that it has uh, very good tutorials available and there's a lot of people that are making videos and, and documents you know and trying to help out other people how to do things so that's one of the good things about MobiFlight that if you probably need help and there's probably a lot of help available right there. Um, and uh, one thing that is very important to me that I think I saw is that it seems that there is no restrictions on uh, parameter assignments. So 
anything that you can get that you can get a hold of you know and, and and be able to use you are able to use it but like i said i haven't used it i just done a lot of reading but so far that's what it seems like and you all know right now the the rant that i've been on regarding um a parameter assignment so so that's a good thing um Another good thing that I liked is that the, the configuration tool is offline. So you download it, you install it on your computer, and you can use it anytime you want to, whether you have internet or not, or whether the website is up or not. So that's very good. Um, and it also works with, uh, apparently with FSX, P3D, X-Plane, and MSFS 2020. I forgot to put X-Plane right there, but it does work with X-Plane as well. Um, so that's very good I think in my opinion that you can use it with any simulator and that's the bad thing about um, Hixi right now is that all my custom panels and everything that I've made I cannot use it with MSFS 2020 basically I just use my Satec panels my Honeycomb Alpha and Bravo and my rudder pedals and that's it everything else is just sitting there looking pretty so that's a pro for Movi Flight all right, now for Hixie right here, um, they also have a great website. They have very good instructions and very good diagrams. Even though I've heard the cries of many people that they don't understand it, they can you know figure out how how to use it and how it how to do certain things. I must say that their their website is fantastic and their instructions are very good, and also their diagrams. I mean, I wish I could do diagrams the way they do. You know that's the wiring schematics and whatever well they're not really schematics but you know what i mean they're really good all right so another good thing about um sim or see i've done it again another positive about hixi is that it is extremely extensible or expandable due to the data bus and system bus architecture that it uses which is you know basically to say uh the multiplexers and all that and you're able to use uh many of them um, so that makes it extremely versatile when it comes to how much you can connect to it as I have shown in the previous slides and um, the good thing about the configurator being online is that it is always updated so you don't have to you know if if something changes on the back end you don't need to download another version because it's always updated whenever they make changes to the website it's always there you know so every time you go visit to, to do some configuration, you might find some pleasant surprises there. Hopefully pleasant. All right, now let's go to the cons. So for the cons, um, like I've mentioned, I mentioned all of these before, I believe, but I'm just gonna run through them right now because they're all gonna be here in one place now. So no multiplexer support. That is a big one, I think, because that is what limits how much you can connect on each Arduino. So for me, that's a big one. Um, no analog or potentiometer support so you know if you wanted to put any uh, lights or dimmers or anything like that like I said flaps um, well the flaps you can do with other stuff like switches but uh, the speed brake the throttles you know the carburetor heat um, uh, whatever uses um, axis you cannot do that with Moby Flight and um, I mentioned before also no TM1637 7 segment display support you know which is a bummer for me because they're they only use four wires so they're a lot easier to connect and they have four or six digits which I mentioned before I really like so that's a bad one all right so the servo and stepper motor I think is still experimental even though I did see plenty of um, tutorials and all kinds of stuff on it I think it's not a hundred percent nailed down and uh, I'm not sure if you know the people are having issues with that but that's the only thing that is still a work in progress. And um, even on their website, I think it also said that it's a work in progress. All right, now, in order to do all the parameters and everything that, you know, like in x -Plane, we use uh, commands and data reps and everything to get the simulator to do what we need it to do. Well, this uses uh, for P3D and FSX and MSFS 2020, it uses FSUIPC which um, you know probably some of you guys have heard it is basically like a program that allows you to get uh, and give inputs and outputs from the simulator you know, so it's kind of the same as uh, x-plane you know with the data reps and commands or it's just 
a communications protocol between the simulator and outside and that tool is what allows you to use that um, they say that if you use the free version it pretty much can fulfill all your needs but there is some more advanced things that you can do which you need to buy the paid version and I think it's only like 25 euros so it's not very expensive so it's not the end of the world if you do need to buy it um, now the bad thing about that is that you need to learn how to use the offsets and you need to learn how to use uh, the I think in, in uh, flight simulators they call them L bars which I think are like local variables um, so that's the that's almost the, the equivalent of um, data rares in X-Plane I believe um, so that's you need to learn for some functions you need to learn how to use that for a lot of other functions from what I found or what I saw it automatically fills it in for you so you might not have to learn them too much all right so the another bad thing about it even though their documentation is very good um, I only saw a few documents as far as tutorials and all that and even though the written word in the explanation is really good all the screenshots are in German I think it's German um, and uh, you know so it's like yeah you can see the screenshot and everything but everything is in German so you kind of have to compare it to whatever you're seeing on your screen and hope that it says the same thing so that's not a big deal but I just noticed that all right and now the probably one of the number ones which is directly related to the first one which is no multiplexer support is that it could be much more expensive because of the number of boards you have to use you know because if you want to make a pretty complicated cockpit I saw on one of their on one of their uh, I don't know if it was a forum or if it was on the website itself it said that for a full complex cockpit like for an airliner maybe that they expect that you could need 30 to 40 Arduinos so if you buy let's just say you you're able to get cheap Arduinos and you get them for twenty dollars each and you need you know let's say in on the low end you need 30 of them that's six hundred dollars of Arduinos if I'm doing my math correctly you know and with Simvim cockpit you know you can use one Arduino and let's say you do have to get the three uh, or four unos and nanos you know just to get um, all the controller boards that I mentioned before and the, the unos or nanos I believe they're a lot cheaper so let's say you spend forty dollars on the mega and you spend I don't even know how much they are I have an uno or a nano but I don't remember how much it cost it let's just say they're they're twenty dollars each so you're gonna spend forty and eighty more that's hundred and twenty dollars and then you get like five multiplexer boards for under ten dollars you can get it much cheaper depending on how well you look for the, the deals but you get my point right I mean instead of spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on megas and megas and megas you can only spend maybe twenty to thirty dollars on a bunch of multiplexer boards and each multiplexer board gives you 16 inputs or outputs so you can see where I'm going with that that's why I think that MobiFlight can be much more expensive if you're gonna build a very complex setup alright so now let's go to Hixi so for Hixi one of the negatives that I that I kind of mentioned before is that it's an online only configurator um, so if the site is gone then you cannot do any configuring if it just happened to disappear from the face of the planet because you know Vlad and Roman got tired of it um, or got tired of me making videos about it then you cannot do any more configuration after that whatever you have built up until that moment that's it you're done you know that's what you got for the rest of your life unless you decide to go to another solution all right so um, now the other one, the other bad thing about it is that if you want to use servos or stepper motors you have to use uh, another Uno or a Nano as a controller for those two things and for the stepper motors you also have to use a driver so you need the, the controller and the drivers instead of just being able to connect them directly to the to the Mega so that's a negative for Hixi right here um, the for payware aircraft you know we need to do custom commands and data rares. I mean you guys have probably heard already how much I've been complaining about that lately so we we need to be able to use custom commands and data rares, but yet there's a lot of 
things, a lot of parameters that we are not allowed to change them. So that's a really bad negative for me right now. So the, the two biggest negatives right now for me about Hixie is that it's an online only configurator, <clears throat> which I also gave it a, a pro for that part, but it's a negative too. And that we are not allowed to change a lot of the custom commands and data rest for a lot of parameters. All right. And next on my list is there's almost no tutorials for Simvim. Oh, I'm sorry. See, I did it again. I, this is going to keep happening for a while until I drill it into my head, I guess. So there's almost no tutorials for Hixie except for mine, you know, so I, I'm still missing a lot of knowledge. You know, I, I've only tried to explain and make videos about things that I have done and that I understand, or at least that things that are working for me, you know, I am not going to try to explain something that I have no idea how to do, you know, so that's why even what I put out is limited to my knowledge and my understanding of it. I've seen, you know, pictures and videos of setups out there that are using um, SimVim cockpit, you know, that are very amazing, you know, and there's no way in the world I would even think ever of doing something that, that complex and that amazing because I just don't have the skills to do that or maybe even the knowledge. You know, so whatever anybody wants to learn on, you know, by watching videos, um, it's not going to be the whole thing, you know, so that's a very bad thing in my opinion, which is the reason why I started making videos because there was none. I couldn't find anything about Simvim Cockpit, so I started making, you know, some of this. All right. And then the last, also a very big one, unless like for me, it doesn't really matter too much because I love x and I have... All my my custom aircraft, all my scenery that I have, I have no intention of of stopping with uh, flying X plane. I have MSFS twenty twenty, but I've mentioned that before. You know, it's it's so disappointing to me right now with a lot of the a lot of things that are not good, other than the visuals that I don't even use it. You know, I I literally only fly MSFS like maybe one hour a month, sometimes not even that. You know, most of the time is I just fly it a little while after an update just to see how it went. You know, if, if, if it still works or what they added or what they changed. And I must say the visual quality of it is, is damn good. But um, I'm okay with x -Plane, But it is a very big negative that it doesn't work with any other simulator right now. So we'll see what happens in the future with that. All right, now, I think that about pretty much... Um, finishes off my explanation of everything that you know that I have um, encountered about these two things um, so my final thoughts am I gonna switch like I really don't think so you know especially with my setup which I have I think I have about 12 multiplexer boards you know that are already everything is already wired and you guys have seen pictures of of what a rat's nest it is I don't even want to think about undoing that and then having to go probably buy, you know, three or four more megas, you know, in order to rewire everything. So honestly, I don't think I'm going to switch. Um, what I might do is I might try MobiFlight on my, my laptop, which is a, the laptop that I'm working on right now to record this video. And I do have a copy of x -Plane on my laptop and all the testing and everything that I do here on my, on my work table of all the videos that you guys have seen lately, um, I do them on the laptop. So I can actually just start experimenting and playing around with that and um, just seeing how it works. You know, maybe, who knows, maybe in the future I'm going to um, make a hybrid system where those uh, commands and data refs that I am not able to change in Hixie, you know, I will probably assign some of those things to another Arduino Mega with uh, MobiFlight. But then I got to worry about how is, it, how is uh, Hixie going to behave with another Arduino Mega that's connected to the same computer, you know, so I don't know guys um, there, There's just too much about SimVim cockpit that I like. Oh, that's another negative that I well I kind of mentioned it, but not not exactly how I thought Compared to, to Hixie There is I don't think there's anything out there that is as easy like you know that radio that panel that I made for the previous video with uh, the ADF panel you know, it has a f six buttons, a dual concentric rotary encoder with a push button in the middle and two displays. Um, it took me, literally, it took me like about 
maybe four minutes to configure it or less to go into the configurator, assign all the functions to all the buttons and boom, it's working. I, I did that live, you know, while I was recording that video and it was really fast, I think. It, I think I did it live. But, you know, when it comes to other things like this, I mean, it'll probably take you a while, you know, to go through all the steps and everything a lot more complicated. It's not as easy as just clicking on something that's on a picture even sometimes in, in uh, Hixi on the website. You know, you just see what you want, click on it. I want it on this pin and you're done. You save the configuration file and you're done. You know, so there is nothing out there that as easy as that. And one of the reasons why I haven't went to to other things like also like uh, using a Teensy board. I have a friend of mine who always uh, wants to try to uh, not convince me, but he, he wants to let me know why you know, using a Teensy board for him is more beneficial. You've probably seen some comments on some of the videos. Is that um, he can do all his coding and basically he has full control of what his buttons and switches and everything do. But I don't know if I want to take the time to learn a programming language in order to be able to do this. That's what attracted me so much to this project when I started is that you don't need to learn other than basic electronics and all that, you don't need to learn anything as far as programming or coding or nothing. You just click on a couple of lines of pictures and or letters, click where you want to assign them, save the file, and you're done. And if you wired everything correctly, it just works. So for me, I think I'm going to stay with uh, Hixi for now. And I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope that they open up all those uh, parameters that are not able to be changed right now and if they make them um, editable that'll be it it'll be like pretty much everything that I can ask for and I'm sure a lot of people as well from what I've seen in the comments all right go cool. so this is it for this video hopefully I didn't miss anything hopefully I didn't mess up if I did um, I really really want to say I'm sorry I did all the research I can possibly do and I am also human so I could make mistakes so if I miss something misrepresented something on either of them then uh, just uh, excuse me for that I did my best <laughs> and I hope it helps you guys uh, make a determination if you guys were leaning one way or the other alright well thank you guys very much for watching that's it for this one see you on the next one